Mm. Yesterday, we were talking about the myosin crossbridge cycle. So myosin, this plus end directed motor protein that bounds and interacts directly with actin, causing the crossbridge cycle. So where myosin walks along actin, causing force to be produced, leading to muscle contraction. So remember our example from the live demonstration. So we have here our actin filament, again represented by our yardstick. And real quick, remember the myosin crossbridge cycle. So myosin with the head was attached initially to the, AT, to the actin. ATP came in and bound to the myosin head, causing it to release. ATP got hydrolyzed, causing it to cock to a new position, reattach, and then we lost the inorganic phosphate, triggering the power stroke, like so. And this kept happening over and over again, as long as ATP was active. Now that was the unregulated form, okay? So this was if ATP is always present, which it is, but there is no other way to regulate it, then your muscles would be constantly contracting and myosin would be constantly walking and interacting with the actin. Now it turns out that this isn't obviously the case. Your muscles do relax and then they get stimulated to contract. So what we see now and what we will be introducing is how this muscle contraction gets regulated. So it turns out that again along the actin filament there is an additional filament here that we'll see that actually wraps around the actin filament like so, played by this cord. So this filament that wraps, or this other protein that wraps around the actin filament is going to be called tropomyosin. Now what tropomyosin does is it positions itself onto actin such that the myosin head cannot bind to the actin. So if myosin is not bound to actin, then we can't cause muscle contraction to occur. So when your muscles are in a relaxed state, now this is skeletal muscle, is in a relaxed state, this tropomyosin is positioned such that the myosin cannot bind to the actin. And what we will see is that this gets regulated. So there's an additional protein on top of tropomyosin that looks like a little another little protein basically it's not as intense and what happens is that this protein which is called troponin helps to position the tropomyosin onto actin or take it off of the actin in order to cause and trigger muscle contraction and we will see that this whole process is regulated by the ion calcium so what we're going to see is that there's a big mechanism coming up so what will happen is that you will stimulate your muscles to contract calcium as we will see will flood out of the sarcoplasmic reticulum bind to troponin troponin will bind to the tropomyosin and will take the tropomyosin off of the actin filament and now the myosin can interact with the actin filament, ATP comes in, and then we trigger the crossbridge cycle. So now we're going to look in detail as to how troponin and tropomyosin and calcium all interact with each other and play this role of regulating. Now, based off of control. what we just described, showing you the example of the actin with the yardstick, the tropomyosin wrapping around it, played by the telephone cord, now take a look at your picture here for those of you who have it on your slide here from topic uh, 28 and what we see is this structure here so again in red is your actin filament the yellow is this protein called tropomyosin which again wraps around the actin filament in such a way that it prevents myosin from binding to actin or interacting with actin and then attached to the tropomyosin is this smaller protein called troponin, represented here by TN, and tropomyosin is abbreviated TM. So again, 
what we're going to see is that troponin controls tropomyosin and tropomyosin controls when myosin can interact with the actin filament and trigger the cross bridge cycle which leads to muscle contraction okay. so again we have this diagram here so again in the gray on this one you have the in the gray is representing the actin yellow is tropomyosin and again I mentioned in the quick little live demo that this is all regulated by calcium so the ion calcium when it without calcium tropomyosin lies along actin blocking the myosin from interacting but now when we add calcium tropomyosin slides off of the actin filament in such a way that it will expose the actin to myosin and now myosin can bind to actin and the cross bridge cycle can continue and then again this little schematic here says just that so calcium with plus calcium so calcium as calcium levels rise the calcium binds to troponin when calcium binds to troponin troponin which is already attached to tropomyosin pulls the tropomyosin off of the actin filament and now myosin can go ahead and interact with the actin and then when calcium levels decrease then this process is reversed calcium comes off of troponin troponin puts tropomyosin back on top of actin and now myosin can no longer bind to actin troponin also has a couple of key features so again troponin is what regulates tropomyosin so again troponin interacts with the tropomyosin and it positions the tropomyosin either in the on state or the off state so tropomyosin in the on state is when it's positioned on the actin preventing or blocking myosin from binding tropomyosin is in the off state when troponin pulls tropomyosin off of the actin and now myosin can bind and interact with actin so the troponin which again controls tropomyosin has three main functional domains if you will it has what's known as the TNT which stands for uh, the troponin uh, domain that interacts with tropomyosin so TNT is the part of troponin that binds to tropomyosin you have the TNI which is required to position tropomyosin in the off state and then you have the TNC which is related to calmodulin so remember calmodulin was a protein that is attracted to and binds calcium so TNC is the part of troponin that will bind calcium and again when calcium binds to troponin this tells troponin to pull off tropomyosin from the actin filament which then allows myosin to bind to the actin.